Cosas Verde is gonna blow your Bitcoin and crypto mind. Watch this little thing get excited over here. 69K top, it got excited because of the top, right? It's, it's pretty hot stuff. So we got an origin line here, price got rejected. The origin line itself jettisoned price down to the next one. This is another origin line, origin line, origin line, origin line. These are orange because they're the master origin line area. You cannot find it anywhere else. I essentially came up with labeling these the name origin line, but they should be popular on YouTube, I would say in two or three years, right? But they came from my channel and you won't see them anywhere else, but we're gonna, this is gonna be awesome. Watch this. So another origin line, it sent price down, but then it only acted as an immobile wall as opposed to a driving force that pushes it. You see that? So price to go, uh, 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 it's a wall, but this wall is not pushing it down. Something else came in here, push it down. When here, the, the origin line made it sell off. Here, the origin line made it sell off. What, what did it do here? Yes, it trapped it, but what like essentially was the kill shot? It wasn't that line here. That, so once it came to the next origin line down, yes, the, the origin line itself sent it down. Here, the origin line sent it down twice in a row now. But this one, something else sent it down. This was a wall, but it didn't actively push price down. And then twice in a row, it was a wall because it could, price could not get it back over it besides this bull trap here, which most of us remember back in September, uh, sept yeah, around September 11th. <laughs> it was all planned around that day. Um, anyway, so but that other thing, what is it? We're going to we're going to layer that on the chart next. I'm going to show you what that is. So and then again, once again, we have another repeat going down below another origin line. And we now know either it's going to get rejected from the origin line or it's going to interact with that thing that's invisible so far. I'm going to show you what it is. And so in this video, we're going to go over in terms of upward price action. I'm not going to go over the downside price action because y'all know I'm already bearish. I'm, I, I just, I think Bitcoin's going to get sent uh, below 14 or definitely below 15 K uh, before February. So I, we've covered that extensively on my channel. If you're a new viewer, you can go to my previous videos. Uh, almost any of them <laughs> uh, to find out where the targets are. But I'm thinking between 9,600 to let's say 14.2 are my targets. But anyway, and by, 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 uh, by March 1st of 2023. Anyway, so here, here's what we're going to do in this video. Check it out. Will that invisible force that I'm going to show you what it is here in a second, is that what's going to push price down? Is price going to get rejected by this or is it going to be something in between? We're getting very, very mature in this move where Bitcoin price has to decide. So let's dive in and go get some Bitcoin. First, let's have some fun and dive into each of these origin line interaction or interactions. Origin line interaction number one. Ugh. Do you want some chicken or some whoopings? <laughs> some whoopings. This one wanted some whoopings. That, that's a Cat Williams, uh, Cat, Cat Williams joke. Anyway, so it came below the origin line. Perfect rejection sent down. That's, that's interaction number one. Interaction number two came below. Failure rejection pattern. Let's zoom way, 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 way in. And almost on the four hour chart, a perfect rejection. If I zoomed into like the five minute, I bet I would see it in here but you can't go that far back and rejection. That's interaction number two. So you can see that these lines are real. So where, where did this bounce? Close to the origin line. Where did this bounce? Exactly at the origin line. Does anybody else have this origin line on their chart? No, you will not find anybody with the same line. A YouTuber on earth with that same line that goes back 12 years like mine. All right. Anyway, so you're, you're here seeing something you will not see anywhere else. New viewers. Okay, hey, origin line interaction. Uh, once again, this is the third one, right? So it came below and rejection. And let's see what happened thereafter. So again, this is the one where something else sent it down. So the first rejection sent it, but this only acted as a wall here. This is one where uh, so this is one of the ones where it got sent from the origin line. All right. Now let's zoom down in here. Another one, I, yes, this one got sent down from the origin line. And this might have been when the monthly 10 was there as well. I, or no, was that the previous one? Yep, that was the previous one. This was interacting with the monthly 10. And I nailed price action <laughs> in that area pretty well uh, with my analyses. All right, so let's see. 
And we, we just checked out this one, right? So interaction number, what is it, four? Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. All right. Interaction number five. We're going to zoom into that one. Check it out. Check it out. I could probably go to the one hour chart now. That's a big failure pattern. That, that one was a little trickier. Forming a W around there. See how this W formed? Inverse head and shoulders and it broke down. What happened here? What is it? What is it? My returning viewers already know. It's the biggest, baddest single uh, time frame indicator on earth. All right. So he had a big bull trap. Actually, bear trap, bull trap. This was just all fabricated price. This was literally traditional finance with their bots. Already had this planned. They planned it all. This was one or two groups uh, together to move it that much. Um, anyway, so origin line went below. Rejection got sent. Okay. All right. So now what is that invisible thing? Oh, actually, it didn't get sent. It stayed. It, it tried to come back to this wall. So something sent it here. What is it? Here it is, sir. So now when we get to zoom out with the weekly 10, you now know how this falls. Either it's going to come up to the origin line, get rejected, then go down to the next origin line or two down, or it's going to go sideways until it interacts with the weekly 10, interacts with the weekly 10, and then it'll come down and land on the origin line and wait to uh, wait to go to the next one until the 10 squeezes it. So you see how you see how price had nowhere to go in this triangle here. See that here? Let me zoom in. So this was back in uh, April of, of 2022. This is called a, uh, a bearish squeeze play. So 10 is squeezing. So it's putting pressure down, 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 down. But this line here is pressure up, up, up. It's pushing up, up, up. So you have something pressing down while another is pressing up and price is getting squeezed. Like literally, you know, no punt, no prison jokes intended, but like uh, a bar of soap between your between your hands squeezing on it right so as this thing gets excited here no prison jokes allowed here so anyway it gets squeezed down see that so this had a double interaction origin line pressure up weekly 10 pressure down check it out here it didn't need a squeeze play it just it got sent from the origin line you see that different it didn't need this descending once again here the, the weekly 10 was way far above which, which is an indication of why this went sideways for 170 days. Because it was way too far below the weekly 10. And what did it do? It played with the weekly 10 once, twice, three times, and then what happened right here? Watch, let's zoom way in there. Actually, let's zoom here and here. So you can see it's it really is just the origin lines and the weekly 10 that are that are making like essentially the big moves here. Probably not the micro moves, but it's dictating the the next, I mean, essentially move. <sighs> All right, so here's the second to last one. Look at price dancing on this line. So you can clearly see that it this was the line that buyer and sellers were fighting over. Buyers won a big war. Boom, 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 boom. Big bull trap, big bull trap. And then the sellers started taking over. Bulls defended, sellers took over. Let's go down to the three minute chart. If I can. Look. So it looked like the bears were really in control. The bulls did not put up much of a fight here. Not at all. That's not much interaction there. But what did the bulls do? And it actually might have been the same. So this was probably the same people selling it. So whoever sold here also bought it here and also sold it. This, that's what happens when nobody's trading Bitcoin, not not transacting, but trading Bitcoin. See how perfectly it came down to the next origin line? A bloom. See that? Look at this. This line has been here for years. Forty bucks off. All right. So check it out. Now, what is going to happen in your mind? Now that we know how every fall has been generated, let's take a look at some different indicators on top. Okay. All right. So the weekly 10 is about here right now. Okay. 
So if price, this chart says price is not gonna break down quite yet. See this? I mean, the, the let's take price off. So the, the rainbow is above the gray line and the gray line's above the blue line. It's all in bullish order. So it would, you know, if you do have a downturn, you're gonna have a big, you're gonna have a violent move back up before it then rolls over. I don't think you're just gonna spill off of this unless the one hour doesn't have, ooh, you know what, you could just spill. So the one hour rainbow is not above the gray, so it actually could spill over. I do take that back, um, but we're not gonna do downside stuff. Uh, but I, I wanted to make sure I, what I said was accurate. I, I, it's not accurate. So on the one hour chart, if this falls, it can just, it can make new lows rather quickly uh, within you know a day or hours. Okay, so here we go. What is it going to look like if Bitcoin comes up to this line? Well, it's probably going to happen before December 15th or yeah, on or after December 15th, because that is when the next big economic data comes out or no, like around the 13th. I'm sorry. So 13th, to 15th, I'll put the 14th. Got to happen by then. So if Bitcoin comes up there and gets rejected around that time, around the 13th or 14th, that will be 18,515. Is that making sense? That is the origin line. We just saw over and over and over, there are two ways this happens. Either it goes to the origin line, gets sent, or it hits the red and gets sent. That's literally all that's been happening. And, you know, it is possible. So let's take this off now. It's possible that it gets on top of the red, right? Which is the weekly 10 EMA, like so. possible that price gets on top of this, a failure pattern, and does something weird like that, right? Because a few, but without touching this origin line. So it's possible that it just comes up like right between there. That would be a little tricky. And if somebody like me, not you, because this is not financial advice, we're wanting to short, I wouldn't be able to short that. I would have to wait till it interacts with this line, gets rejected, similar to how we just saw over there on the tiny candles, and then gets sent. I wouldn't be shorting in the middle here. I would wait for some, you know, some interaction up here. But if it goes above the weekly 10, I would either take, you know, start selling into a rally when it hits here, start holding tether personally, not you, not financial advice, or I would uh, start doing it right as it hits the weekly 10, but not if it goes in the middle, okay? All right, those would be kind of my, my thought processes. So what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think it's going to A, break down in one way or another, B, interact or get sent by the weekly 10, or C, get sent by the origin line, or D, that was the bottom, bear market's over, we're going to this origin line, and we're going to ride it for a while, which is possible, that's how you get out of, uh, and then you go up. A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, oh no, C, or it actually goes up and that's the bottom. That's literally all that's getting ready to happen between now and February. And I think I just showed you, I mean, pretty clearly, <laughs> that the options uh, of what Bitcoin can do are limited. It, it does behave in a specific way. Now, check this shit out. Watch this. So you have two best fit bear lines, one going from 64K top, one going from the roughly the area of the 69K top. This one has a steeper slope. It's not fully out of play, but the more immediate support is now here. And they flip spots, which one's the most immediate support. So price, so let's hover in to this blue line to see how price interacted with it to see if it's actually paying attention. If it didn't pay attention to it or did not interact with this blue line, that means it's not really in play and the traditional finance algorithms are not seeing it and it's not real so I can get rid of it, right? So let's go look. Was this a real line? Is it obvious that at a certain moment or a long part portion of moments, like a month, that this was the battle line? Hmm, let's see here. Price is above, price is under, long fight in the middle. Okay. Price is above, price is below, lots of fight in the middle. Hmm. 
Touching this line a whole bunch. Goes down, comes back up. Ooh, this time the bulls were in control. See how that's different? See how it mostly stayed above? And just a little bit under, but all the fights at the same line. So you could tell the bulls were starting to take control there. See, it's very different than this. This was about a 30-70 split. So but bears were 30% in control, bulls were 30% in control. Or, uh, yeah, bull. No, 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 so sorry. 30% are bulls, 70% in charge were bears. About Because 70% of the price action from here to here was under the line. Does that make sense? So this, obviously, is a real freaking line. So if you have a downturn, all right, one of your major targets will be here, which is everybody. So here's where we start getting my micro, and then we're going to wrap this bitch up. The move, Bitcoin's move is still intact as long as, or move up. I'm so sorry. Bitcoin's move up is still intact as long as it's above this origin line connecting from the yearly current yearly low to that next local low at 16. So about 50, uh, 50, the low to 16K, that's the line you need it on your chart. If it falls below here, it will hit the blue line next. Because it's already confirmed that's where the fight was, right? So if the fight over here ends, they're going to back to their stomping grounds and they're going to pick that battleground again. That's where the buyers and sellers will fight it out one more time. Does that make sense? So here, Bitcoin could easily come down on Monday through Tuesday to 16.6. And it's still in a very beautiful uptrend. Very nice uptrend. The only tricky thing that I can see happening here is if it does go through here, gets rejected, sent down. See how this low is right here? It wicks down but closes the day here and then charges up and that was a fake out. So if you, there's going to be a fake out around this line, it will wick below here. This So low, higher low, it'll wick below that low but the day will close above. If you see that happen, then you have about a 50-50 chance that that was a bear trap and you're getting ready to go up. But it's only if that happens, and it probably would be the daily close. It, they would fake you out on the daily, make you think from the one hour and four hour perspective that it's getting ready to tank. It went below this line and the low, um, the, the previous low. So now you're in, now you're in a no, you're not in an uptrend anymore. But then at the very end, it saves the daily uptrend. Okay, so that's what a bear trap would look like. Uh, it is possible, but if you don't see that exactly, if, if you don't see that happen right around the daily close and slash daily open, it comes back up above this uh, area from going below it, then it's not, it, then it's it's just gonna keep going down uh, until it hits this blue line. Okay. All right. And if you wanna get a little snazzier with things, to stay on top of price with support and resistance very clearly, you can try making these white lines here. It might be a little clear on my other chart. Hold on. Do I have micro? That's a macro channel. Oh, yeah, we didn't check that out. Let's see where Bitcoin is in its macro channel. Check this out. And again, this is a channel that you will only, this is a trading channel you will only see on my channel. Bull trap zone is purple. Okay, now let's zoom in to where price is. Go to the fifth 30 minute chart. It's in the bull trap zone again, getting ready to hit this uh, long-standing horizontal origin lines way up here 
It's going to have a lot of trouble getting over 17.7. And it might happen exactly when the if the weekly 10 can get right there. Can it? Ooh. That might be the exact target, everybody. Um, <laughs> that might be exactly where it goes. And if I were a whale, I would go boom and then boom. I would make it come down fast and hit it right there. And the weekly 10. You're accomplishing so much with that hit. Yeah, that, that that looks like uh, that would be my favorite. My honestly, that would be my absolute favorite target, and that would be on Tuesday, December sixth, Tuesday to Wednesday, when that is crossing. So the weekly ten might not be down there till Friday. So it looks like next week this line's going to be hit alongside the weekly ten, but it would take until the, late in the week for the weekly ten to be hit if seventeen seven is about as high as it goes. So let's take that guy off. And now, I thought I had, oh, there they are. Okay, perfect. Now, these lines. Right here. You can use these for faster heads ups. So if it falls below here, then you're at least coming here, for example. And this was the neckline. But until you fall below this line, there will be no tradable move on candles larger than, I don't know, like the, maybe the 30 minute and larger. Five minutes, yeah, you can trade a two, a 3% zone. Okay, you can trade 3% with five minute candles, but if you're not trading tiny, tiny candles, the, the, the tradable move uh, happens, you know, is initiated by these lines on small time frames. So it's in a micro channel and it is respecting these lines, obviously very, very nicely. Look, support, 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 or no, resistance, resistance, okay? Resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance. So what's gonna, what's this gonna do? Either it's gonna get above, use it as support, or it's gonna come up to it, use it as resistance, pull back and then get above it. So these four lines are going to help you on if you're dealing with very small term time frame stuff. You really want to copy these channels. This goes back to uh, the 9th of November. November 9th is right here. I'm on the 30 minute chart and I, I think I just. Uh, and so the breakdown, check this out, layer this on. It's getting ready to cross. So pretty soon, honestly, it's now. If it goes below this level, it could actually, <laughs> I don't think it would be a bear trap. I, I Actually, I'm gonna say this. As of now, if price goes back below 16.6, I think price is getting ready to uh, suffer. <laughs> it would have to, I don't know, it would probably go, it would probably go down a whole thousand bucks to 15.7, I would say. I think it would skip this line and wanna test this guy. <sighs> could I see a fake out here? Yes, I could. I could see that happen because a lot of people are going to be looking at this line. Price could get tricky. But if it happens, I think it's going to get rejected by what was the support line and then it's coming down. So I, I'm thinking that if price goes below 16.6 this week or Sunday or whatever, uh, the day I'm recording this, what what will happen is if it goes below 16.6, it will use this as resistance. Maybe still, it could still actually get up to 17.7. But I think it would be more likely getting rejected by 17.2 right here because it would have this horizontal then crashing into this and you'd have double resistances and the weekly 10 coming down, triple resistance. So yeah, if it goes below 16.6, it's much, 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 much more likely to either get trapped here, to get trapped here, or to get trapped by one, two, triple resistance. And that would be closer to the 10th of December, um, which is about as long as uh, typical monthly backfills last about uh, four to 10 days. So that that's how price, uh, this is how price would most likely break down in a non um, extravagant fashion, non, you know, just, yeah, it doesn't tank. It just kind of uh, gets, it meets triple resistance then heads down slowly. I'm not gonna show you what it would look like if it's gonna tank, but it would involve this line and especially this line. It'd probably go boom. And once it fell from this line, then it could really heat up. So make sure these you have these uh, channel lines here because it's going to help you tell when does price essentially, when will the bigger buyers and the big and or bigger sellers, when are they going to step in? And that's when price moves faster. You know, have you uh, played Mario Kart um, or Mario Brother or not Mario Brothers? Mario, yeah, Mario Kart. Um, I don't play a game, so <laughs> I'm not a video game person. But uh, 
Yeah, it's the one where you're on, it's me, Mario, and you're you're shooting like turtles and stuff out, lightning bolts out of your butt or something. Um, this is like one of those rampways that makes you go faster, each of these, but you have to pass it, right? So typically if you're in between here, you're less volatile by nature. You got to pass one of these, but that happens to be when price gets more volatile. So look, like, look, look, I'll actually prove it to you. Watch the very last time one of these lines was crossed was here. Right now, let's look. Let's zoom in. Watch. I'm gonna go to the one minute chart. Watch this. I just, I mean, the very last one. Uh, what I'm saying is, okay, let's go to the one minute. Couldn't get above. Rejection, rejection, failure pattern, or no, failure pattern, failure pattern, failure pattern, failure pattern, rejection. Rejection, failure pattern, rejection, failure pattern, kabloom, let's zoom in here. Watch, I'm telling you, this is, like, this is, okay. So, does this look like a Mario freaking skid pad or not? Or whatever they're called. The faster ramp thingies, okay? Right there, this is the very last time. But it can happen in the down sense too. It can also accelerate. So, even though I'm not gonna make guesses of how Bitcoin price is gonna accelerate down and a fake out and just massive sell off, it's gonna have to do with these lines. I think Bitcoin's a little too bullish right now to give it all up. It's got to start rolling over a little bit um, or getting rejected by that uh, by the line that's currently support the the orange one that I had the trend line. Um, but not everything gets this crazy good. But uh, but anyway, any move to the downside, it would look like this to the inverse on one of these micro lines. Are you seeing what I'm are you smelling what I'm stepping in? All right, so if you want to check out what it's like in the Discord, here's a playlist for that. If you want to see a playlist of some of the most important videos in crypto I've ever made, click this one right here. You got Tim about Worldwide. Peace.